Continuing with class number 14, here's an example out of Sengel with a nozzle and diffuser, I think. Yes, I think so. So anyway, um, so you have the deceleration, no, just a diffuser. Because we did a nozzle already, I want to have a diffuser example. Air at 10 degrees Celsius and 80 kilopascals enters the diffuser of a jet engine steadily with a velocity of 200 meters per second on the inlet. The inlet area of the diffuser is 0.4 square meters. The air leaves the diffuser with a velocity that is very small compared with the inlet velocity. Determine A, the mass flow rate of the air, and B, the temperature of the air leaving the diffuser. Okay, sort of like a typical problem, a typical diffuser problem. Let's see if we can get this to focus. Just like I try to get my brain to focus, but it doesn't do that very well. So um, the T1 is 10 degrees Celsius, which we know is 283 degrees Kelvin. And P1 is 80 kilopascals. And we know this is air, right? And this is the diffuser here, air, right here. So there's one and two on this. Um, and it's entering. Yeah, the entry the velocity at one is 200 meters per second and it slows down okay because that's what happens and it's much much smaller so that's a much much smaller symbol much much smaller the inlet area okay so we have a1 is going to be uh 0.4 square meters okay um so maybe we want to look up uh in table in our book, because this is single, but we'll table A5, I think that sounds right. Um, we'll find the gas constant, and that's a kilojoule per kilogram degree Kelvin. And while we're there, we can get CP, same as CPO, I don't care about the O, 1.004 kilojoules per kilogram degree Kelvin. And so the ideal gas law, P equals MRT, or P specific volume V equals RT, we can find out what V is, V1, by taking RT1 and dividing it by P1. So 0.287 times R283 divided by 80. And we will get 1.0153 cubic meters per kilogram. So the mass flow rate uh, can be found by having a v1 a1 over v1. Right. This rate right, that v1 a1 is the volumetric flow rate. And this is essentially the same thing as multiplying by density. Dividing by specific volume is the same thing. So there you go, as uh, multiplying by density. So we're gonna go 200 times our 0.4, and that's gonna be, this is meters per second, square meters, that's cubic meters per second, divided by cubic meters per kilogram. Oops, I put an extra zero on that for some reason. And didn't even erase it for some reason. Uh, five three. And so we're dividing by cubic meters per kilogram, so we're going to get kilograms per second, and somewhere seventy eight point seven, actually eight zero. Okay, kilograms per second. Now. We want to try to find what the enthalpy is. We could use the specific enthalpy, I mean the specific uh, volume, a specific heat, sorry, to find out what the change in enthalpy is, or just check with um, yeah. So what I did is I actually uh, did a um, uh, interpolation. I used table A.7.1. All right, this is air. Let's look at let's look at that. And found okay because they were saying 
that we were at um, looking at 10 degrees Celsius. Why am I saying this? 10 degrees Celsius. Oh, yeah, okay, so we're, uh, uh, it's sort of obnoxious, yeah. Let's go back, oh, I gotta go to A, A. I'm all the way up in F. So here's the, uh, the, the table I was talking about, 8.7.1. This is in Kelvin, so at 10 degrees Celsius, we're gonna be at 283, which isn't in there, right? So we have to go in between here and so here is, uh, I did an interpolation between 260 and two, uh, 280. So at, at, at interpolation, at T is equal to 10 degrees Celsius, I have an H of approximately, it's not going to be, uh, uh, it's going to be fine. And by the way, we could we could look this up as well on while we're here. Let's go to um, our good friend here. So we can go to A, air, dry air. Right? And it's interesting though. It's important to know that air usually has water vapor in it, um, so which can influence it. And you'll you'll learn about that in HVAC stuff using the psychrometric charts. You have to be careful with that. Um, so we have pressure and temperature where our pressure was uh, said to be 80, which usually doesn't influence the enthalpy all that much. The temperature, however, will at 10 degrees. And let's see what the, let's see what the results are. Boom, and we have an enthalpy of uh, 283.405, so 283.4. 283 and look what we got. 283.4 okay cool so we can do do it in either way we could have also well you know it's not really a good idea a lot of times to take the temperature and multiply it by this right here but you do see that we have 283 uh, times 1.004 that you're gonna get 283 right or something close to that um, Okay, so if for, for this diffuser, we still have the same equation that we used for the nozzle. It's just backwards, right? Where we're going to have um, the enthalpy plus the kinetic energy is going to be equal to the enthalpy plus the kinetic energy. Except that uh, right here is going to be fat, faster than there, basically. So... We'll go 283.4. And remember when we use uh, the velocity here in this way, we're going to have to divide this by 1,000 because this would only get us joules per, uh, joule, joules per kilogram. And we want to have um, kilojoules per kilogram is what this guy is. And this is 200 squared. Um, and what we decide to do here is that this okay so we want he but we got a problem we don't know this outlet but we were told that it's much much smaller right we're saying that uh very very small well not a lot of times well that's not good enough we still want to check what happens but when you square very very small you could say that it's approximately negligible right because if it's very small compared to this it's an um, and therefore negligible. So we could take HE from the diffuser, the outlet of the diffuser. And by the way, I need to divide by 1,000. I forgot. And we get 303.4 kilojoules per kilogram. Which, um, okay, so that's, that's not great right there because we, we have to, if we're going to use the tables, we have to go backwards and interpolate in between here. All right, so we have to interpolate in between there to find out what that temperature is, which turns out to be right if you interpolate, it turns out to be like about 303, right? If taking a look back at there, here's 303. 303 um, uh, 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 Kelvin. Well, let's go ahead and look up uh, from our website right here 
and put in the 303 and I guess we'll go with atmospheric uh, pressure which actually doesn't uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense on one level mm. Is it okay well, let's just go with atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure 100 and uh, we'll go through enthalpy and so our enthalpy it's going to need to be uh, kilojoules, right? So 303400. Calculate. And we have a temperature of 29.918, which is the same thing uh, that we would have got right here, right? We would get, we expect to get a temperature, if I do uh, based on interpolation, of approximately 303. Uh, degrees Kelvin but of course if you subtract out 273 you get a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius or I, I left off a sig fig because we're approximating 30.0 degrees Celsius but if you go to uh, this website right here and use this tool and because I don't have I don't own EES was the engineering equations also known as ease engineering equation solver and it costs money uh, or any of these other things this is the one this is the website I think I, I, I like the most lately for all the different ones that it has available for it but anyway uh, you'll see that we get 29.91 degrees Celsius which is a good estimate I think